Welcome to the Oracle Flow Builder installation video. This video will provide step-by-step -step instructions to install Oracle Flow Builder. We will review where to download Oracle Flow Builder, cover the system requirements, and proceed with installing the product. To start, go to the Oracle Application Testing Suite page on Oracle Technology Network. This is where you will find data sheet, product demos, training materials, customer success stories, and the download link. Click on the download link to download Oracle Application Testing Suite, which is also known as OATS or ATS for short. Accept the license agreement and scroll down to the Oracle Flow Builder section. Download the zip file, user's guide, and reference guide. I have also downloaded the user's guide to my Windows machine. Let's take a look at the system's requirements, prerequisites, and then instructions to install Oracle Flow Builder. The system requirements for Oracle Flow Builder are as follows. The operating system support is Oracle Enterprise Linux version 5. CPU should be Pentium 4 or higher with a minimum of 2 GHz. Memory should be 4 GB or higher with 8 GB preferred. There should be 20 GB of free disk space with 50 GB recommended and 200 GB preferred. The supported browser version is Firefox 17 ESR. The prerequisites for Oracle Flow Builder or OFB are as follows. There should be an installed and functioning Oracle Database 11G Enterprise Edition version 11.2030 running on Oracle Enterprise Linux version 5. Here are the steps for installing Oracle Flow Builder. There should be a running Oracle Database 11G Enterprise Edition database. If you currently have this database running, you don't need to install it from scratch. In my case, I don't have the database, so I will go ahead and download and install it. There are seven zip files for Oracle 11G database. We will go ahead and download all seven of them. After the 7 zip files are downloaded, it should be installed and configured so that the database can be accessed from a remote machine. Here are the steps for installing Oracle Database 11G Enterprise Edition. We've already downloaded the 7 zip files. We will go ahead and extract the 7 zip files to the same directory. We have completed extracting all 7 zip files. The next step is to run the database installer. The Oracle Universal Installer will appear. The instructions for step 4 says to clear the I wish to receive security updates checkbox. However, if you do wish to receive security updates, please leave that box checked. For step 5, it says to skip software updates. The next step is to select Create and Configure a Database and click Next. Select Desktop Class and click Next. For the next step, we need to specify the install configuration. Enter the Oracle Base Path as follows and replace the username with the actual user account you are using. Once you have the Oracle Base Path populated, the installer will automatically populate the software location and database file location. The database edition should be Enterprise Edition, and the character set should be Unicode. 
Make sure you have the correct character set selected because Unicode is not the default. The OSDBA group should be DBA. For the global database name and administrative password, you can make it anything you want it to be. Make sure you note the password somewhere so that you remember it. If this is the first time you are installing an Oracle product on the server, you will be prompted for an inventory directory. Check to make sure there are enough disk space at the path specified. You can point this path to anywhere you want it to be as long as there are sufficient disk space. On prerequisite checks, if there are errors, click Ignore All and click Next. On the summary page, confirm your entries and click Install. The installation will take some time. For the purpose of this video, I will pause here and resume when installation has completed. The database creation has completed and detailed log files can be found at this path. You may want to note down the information on this screen before proceeding to the next step. A pop-up window will appear prompting the user to run some scripts as the root user. If this is the first time you're installing an Oracle database, you will be prompted to run two scripts. However, if this is not the first time you've installed an Oracle database on the server, you will only be required to run the second script. The pop-up window will indicate how many scripts you need to run. Please note that there is a typo on step 13 in the documentation and that the path for the following script is incorrect. Please look at the path in the pop-up window to find the correct location for the first script. The documentation says to run the script as root user and we will go ahead and do that. When prompted for the password, please enter the password for the root user. Let's go ahead and run the second script. For the second script, you will be presented with some questions. Hit the Enter key if you would like to accept the default or I'll specify another location for the local bin directory. Installation of the database is now complete, and we will go ahead and configure it for remote access. In order to do so, we need to modify tnsnames.org file and change the local host to the fully qualified domain name of the machine. To find out what is the fully qualified domain name, enter hostname-f from the Linux command prompt. Let's go ahead and copy this set command and paste it into Notepad. Please note that when you copy into Notepad, you need to delete the hard-coded return key after the underscore in the Orca home path. Let's replace machinename.company.com with the name of the server that you have installed the database on. And here we are getting an Oracle Home undefined variable error. If you receive this error, verify that the Oracle Home environment variable is set or manually enter the full path to Oracle Home directory in place of this variable. In our case, we will go ahead and set the Oracle Home environment variable. Now that the environment variable for Oracle Home has been set, we will go ahead and run the command again.
The next step is to modify listener.aura and change localhost to the fully qualified domain name. Again, we will go ahead and copy and paste this path and update the machine name with the actual fully qualified domain name. Now we are ready to stop the listener and start it up again. Optionally, we can restart the database, however, we will go ahead and skip that and continue with the installation of Oracle Flow Builder. Since we have completed the database installation, we will go ahead and close the Oracle Universal Installer window. Instructions for installing the Oracle Flow Builder application is as follows. Download the Oracle Flow Builder zip file from Oracle Technology Network. We have already done that previously. The next step is to extract the Oracle Flow Builder zip file. After the zip file is extracted, let's add execute permission to setup.sh. Start the Oracle Flow Builder setup by running the setup shell script. Enter the Oracle Flow Builder installation directory path. Let's copy this path and enter the username used for this account. For the administrator password, enter anything you wish as long as you remember it. For the database host name, hit enter to accept the default or specify something else. The same goes for the database port and SID. Enter system for the database admin username, and for the password, enter the password that you entered previously while installing the database. The installation of Oracle Field Builder will continue. As the installation continues, it will output the progress to the terminal window. The installation of Oracle Flow Builder has completed. Once installed, Oracle Flow Builder will be left in a running state. You can access Oracle Flow Builder at the URL specified at the completion of the installation. You can log into the application using the default administrator username and password, which is administrator and the password entered during product installation. Section 2.4.4 of the Oracle Flow Builder User's Guide contains some commands for server maintenance. For example, you can start and stop the server as well as check the status of the Oracle Flow Builder application. This concludes the Oracle Flow Builder installation video. Thank you for watching.